Hi guys, quite scary news from Iceland. That volcanic eruption, that volcano seems to be after the Blue Lagoon and the Swartzengi power plant. It is going after it and it's going after the defense walls because if it breaches the defense walls, oh my God. So let's hear what they're doing as a last resort to keep the lava from flowing over the defense walls. Because already when we had that incident that that lava lake that has formed around Silingerfell, the lava was flowing in there, creating a lava pool accumulating, and then the wall broke and it was like as if a dam broke. A, a waterfall flow of lava was flowing around Silingerfell Silingerfell, north of Silingerfell, and right into Swartzangi along the defense walls. And it was creeping on the defense wall already because the problem that we're having as well is the lava is building up in height. And we've seen this in Grindavik already in the last eruption. As the lava gets, it's getting higher and higher and is building layers on top of each other, it did creep over the defense wall there as well. And the risk is now, if the road is paved, so to speak, for the next lava waterfall, because that lava pool at Zlingerfell is building up again, then it's already flowing higher and then it can flow over the defense walls and create this waterfall effect. And then it would be even more intense, faster flowing into the Swartzengi area, power plant, Blue Lagoon. And that's the critical point because right now we are seeing a steady action in the eruption. And that's why they're doing something, wow, I never thought that they would. So the lava flow from this volcanic eruption that we're having in the Sutnuka crater series has remained constant for the last few weeks. And now in addition, the land underneath Swartzangi started rising again. It was dipping a little bit. Once the eruption started, it was really subsiding and then it was going flat. So everyone thought, oh wow, that's a Good news, that shallow magma chamber underneath the Swartzangi, the Blue Lagoon and the power plant is being squeezed out and nothing is, is coming to refill it. So the flow is quite balanced. What's coming from a deeper magma reservoir is flowing right out into the eruption. So the geologists were thinking, oh, maybe these pipes that are coming from the deeper magma reservoir are getting, you know, clogged up by buildup of magma that solidifies, getting more narrow and narrow and narrow until it's clogged and this would be the end of the eruption series in this area in the Sutnuka crater series area and some volcanologists geologists were predicting that this could be happening at the end of July of August in the summer that this would end but after the land rise was flat, it started rising again and it's rising steadily again. And the interesting thing is it's already rising, although we're still having the eruption going, this one crater with steady force. So there's enough magma coming from the deeper reservoir so that it can flow into the eruption, but also into the shallow magma chamber under Swartzangi and fill that back up again. They thought it's the end because also they were looking at the chemical um, combination of that lava and it was different than the one that we saw coming out in the last eruption. So it showed that it was older, older, older magma that was coming out of the eruption site. So more comparable to the 2021 Fagradalsfjall eruption. So they were thinking, okay, this has been in there for quite a while. So now it seems everything is emptying out, even the last little bit that has been sitting there for a while. But the land rise tells us otherwise. And the Icelandic Met Office has released a new graph that also shows this. If you look at this graph, so the golden line with the star at the end 
This is how much magma was filling up in that magma chamber and how long it was taking until the star we saw the actual eruption begin that is still going on right now. And then you can see below that, that red line shows that the land was subsiding because the magma chamber was emptying out and then it was flattening, but now it's starting to rise again. And where we see the red circle, that's where we currently are. And the other colored graphs, this is all the past eruptions and intrusions. A square is an intrusion, so magma did not reach the surface, and a star is an eruption. So we see the golden line, the magma chamber was more than full, right, when this eruption started. That's why it started so powerful, it was flowing super, super fast and very, very far in a short period of time towards Grindavik along the defense wall west of Grindavik over the access roads so Grindavik only had one road left Sudostandavegur to the east and that was also threatened but Grindavikur Vegur and Nesvegur in the west were clogged up of course Grindavikur Vegur higher up um, in the Swartsangi area was then clogged as well and overflowed again when this lava pool opened up just a few days ago and everything was shooting towards that direction too. So lava is still flowing to the north and also a little bit to the south and it's slowly, slowly, slowly getting higher and approaching and approaching. So, and they said, yeah, it's very likely that we will see a next lava waterfall once that pool breaks again. Right now, there's also little to no seismic activity at the eruption centers because the magma has a direct flow, doesn't need to grind anything. So also we have new data that in the period of June 3rd to June 10th, the lava flow from the eruption was estimated at 10 cubic meters per second. And since June 10th until now, there have been no significant changes in the activity of the eruption, which the Met Office says indicates that the flow is quite stable and we can see it when we look at it. The Icelandic newspaper MBL just released an article today. They had someone flying over with a drone and they were looking into the crater and it's a lot of red that you see in there. They say that they have done some modeling for the land rise in Swartsangi and that that magma influx, their estimate is the magma influx in this shallow magma chamber that's only at a depth of roughly four kilometers is between one and two cubic meters per second. So that is adding constantly. And the interesting thing is if we add this together, the magma accumulation in the shallow magma chamber plus the magma that is coming out of the eruption site, basically that is a similar magma flow that's coming from the deeper magma reservoir, the, the same amount as it had before this eruption. So we have that deeper magma reservoir is sending out the same amount of magma as it was sending out before. When you look at that graph again, the, the golden line, when the land was rising, when it was preparing for the current eruption, when it was filling up the magma chamber. So it doesn't look like the pipe that goes up from the deeper magma reservoir into the shallow magma reservoir and out into the eruption is clogged in any way. It doesn't look like this. I don't think this will be the end with this eruption. If this eruption dies off, I don't think that's the end of the eruption series as some geologists predict, because I think that buddy there is already preparing for the next one. But guys, it's critical in Swartzangi. Let's talk about this. So as we know, the lava is creeping on the defense wall. And you know, they can only increase the height of the defense wall so much. So they're working on it. They have been working on it since that has happened when the last lava waterfall happened about a week and a half ago or something. So with the dozers, with everything, they're there trying to increase the defense wall. I mean, you can't drive to the other side because there's that still hot 
lava carpet that slowly keeps grinding towards the infrastructure. And while you have to say it, right, while the lagoonies are having their nice swim in the Blue Lagoon, this is what's happening. They're trying to protect their critical infrastructure. And what did they come up with, guys? Maybe you remember, we've talked about this, West Manayar, the Westman Islands in the 1970s and 1973, they had a volcanic eruption and that lava river was threatening their valuable port, like the lifeline of this island where all the business comes in, similar to Grindavik. So the port would have been destroyed. So in the 1970s, they had the idea to cool the lava down to create a barrier with its own lava, right? The lava would be, lava tongue would be cooled, solidified and create a barrier for the lava that comes after it. And they were like, at that time, the technologies, they had to bring in pumps and pipes. It, it wasn't that advanced that they really had these strong and advanced pumps, but they were successful. They saved the port. I mean, you can still see picture where homes are buried in lava and ashes till the roof. And there's still a museum, by the way. If you're in Iceland, it's worth going there. They have basically built a museum around these damaged homes. Um, and it's very interesting to see. So, they're trying this now in Sword Sangi, guys. And this tells you how critical the situation is because they haven't done this before. They always thought it's not necessary, not even in Grindavik, where it's been really flowing at it. And we even had an eruption inside the defense walls in January. So this tells you, and I'll tell you now, what exactly are they doing? So the chief of the fire brigade of Lindavik, he gave an interview with the morning newspaper MBL in Iceland. And basically what he said is we're staying there 24 seven. We're monitoring this and we're doing what we can together with other re responders. And uh, they want to try to prepare to start lava cooling at the defense wall at Swartzengi. So they have laid pipes with water. I mean, the power plant has water. Maybe they're using the water of the Blue Lagoon that <laughs> it's empty. No, I'm sure they will not. So to get water from the power plant, it's a geothermal power plant. So they're using the hot water, sending this out in pipes to the Reykjanes Peninsula to heat people's homes and create electricity, of course. So pipes have been laid from the Swartzengi power plant to this location at the defense walls where the lava started to creep over the wall when the last lava waterfall happened. And they want to ensure that at this area that they have a constant flow of water that they're heading towards that creeping lava that wants to get over the wall. So today at 8.36 p.m., the fire brigade started pumping water into those pipes. And what they're saying is, they're saying they're having a situation there that they're working with several bulldozers and other earth moving machines, pushing soil up on the defense wall to make it higher in that spot where the breach happened. They're strengthening the wall, that's what they're saying, and then they're going to inject water onto it as well to cool the lava that is running alongside of it. So they want to use this combination at that spot where there's weakness in the defense wall. Right now, there are about 20 responders in the area. And I always said, in my opinion, these guys are heroes. They're like added day and night in so many places in Grindavik and defense walls here. So they're really, really great. So there's civil protection, the fire brigade, the Sudorns fire protection, and also fire brigade personnel from Reykjavik, from the capital area. They say we need to stop the lava flow over the defense walls. They're saying we're going to start spraying on the lava that has 
already creeped over the defense walls and the machines are pushing gravel onto that as well. So they're helping each other, cooling it, pushing other gravel on it. So both the bulldozers and the water are working together to keep that in check. And the volcano is trying, it's working, right? So, you know, I'm worried when the next lava river will start, the lava waterfall. And they're saying they need a huge amount of water to cool this lava. So they're saying that they're doing two things. They're laying pipes that are coming from the power plant from Swartzengi, but they also have powerful fire engines that they plan to connect and also use to pump water all the way to the defense wall. But they're also saying, well, cooling lava, that's a long-term project. You don't see results right away. So he says, we will stay there all night and spray the water on the lava. But they're also confident. They say we know what we're doing. And they were asked by the press, like, how long can you stay there? And when will you reach your limit of what you can do, right? That's an understandable question. If the lava keeps pushing and keeps pushing. And the danger is, should that lava pool that's at Sulingerfell break, it happens very, very fast that this lava is coming. Then they need to get away. Their answer is they have to take the middle ground. And what does he mean with that? He says, well, we're just trying to do everything that's in our power, everything that we can do, but it has to be within reasonable limits. Of course, that makes sense, right? They don't want to put people in too much danger. So he says, we're trying to find the golden middle way, so to speak. Um, he says there are a big interest at stake. That's why we need to try to keep the lava away. And the big interest, of course, is this power plant that supplies the Reykjanes Peninsula, great parts of the Reykjanes Peninsula, the southern Reykjanes Peninsula, but also their money maker, such an important money maker, the Blue Lagoon. And they keep the lagoonies coming despite gas pollution, eruption, and all these problems, right? Road clock, they had to drive them all the way around towards Grindavik and then take a western road once they were clearing Nesvegur again. So a lot is at stake, and he says that, right? Big interests, big investors, but of course the power plant as well. He says if the lava starts to flow over the defense walls, then they are reaching the Sorsangi power plant. And then this power plant is next in line to be destroyed by this lava. He's not mentioning the Blue Lagoon. Of course, they're not mentioning it because some tourists could hear that, right? Bad for business. What these responders say is they don't believe that lava cooling as it has been taken place in West Mania will be done here to that extent, to that magnitude. Um, but he says the response parties know exactly what is needed, what they need to do. So he says we are not in any experimental activity. We know what we are doing. So I guess they're using the knowledge that has been acquired during the 1973 West Mania eruption. So I wish them best of luck. I'll keep you updated about this, guys. So this is really volcano against mankind, volcano against infrastructure. So now that this volcano has lava flowing in two directions, to the south and the north, and it's creating these lava pools, there were like sometimes two at a time. Um, and what one geologist said, well, it could change direction quickly and send another fast flowing flow towards Grindavik. They have to be super cautious right now. I'll keep you updated. Watch my latest update about Campi Flegri in Italy. It concerns me a lot, I have to say. Their minister that's responsible for the civil defense, Muzo Mecci, has basically said it's not very likely that an 
evacuation will be successful. What he's saying basically is a lot of people will probably lose their lives should this volcano erupt, one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world. Videos in the end screen, guys. Please don't forget, leave this video a like. Um, if you want to support me and my channel, please do so. I'm very, very grateful for your supers that you're sending me here on YouTube and for the coffees you keep buying me on my site, buymeacoffee.com slash silky. The link is in the description of this video. Thank you so much, guys. Stay safe. I'm out of here. I'll see you very, very soon, guys. Bye-bye.